Howdy, howdy, y'all. It's Tuesday, which means it's Semantics Day. Today, I am joined by Chance Strickland. Chance, hello. Hey, Ben. How are you? Doing all right. I am super excited for this one. I'm, I'm super excited for the, the patterns that we're going to be talking about. Um, and I'm excited to have you on. I've definitely seen you around Twitter for, for a while now. Um, would you uh, like to tell us a bit about yourself, who you are? Sure, yeah. So... Hi, I'm Chance, uh, Chance Strickland, uh, for the full legal name there. Uh, on Twitter, I'm Chance the Dev. I feel like that's the more memorable, catchy way to refer to me, so feel free to, to just call me that if you'd like, and uh, that's how you find me on, on the internet. Uh, yeah, I am a React developer. I've been doing that uh, kind of as my main gig for the last several years. Um, worked in a handful of different projects with different teams, and I've uh, currently focused on education now. And so I'm working prim uh, a lot with uh, React training. Uh, Ryan Florence, Michael Jackson, and that and uh, Brad Westfall, that team. Um, we are available to teach your team how to get better at using React and following all of the, the latest and greatest in uh, patterns and, and uh, best practices in React. And yeah, just uh, really love training folks on how to to be better developers and build better UIs. So uh, I do a lot of work as well in accessibility. So I'm a really big fan of your show here and, and your focus on accessibility. Uh, I work a lot on an open source library called ReachUI that is all about building um, really highly accessible, high quality uh, React components with a, a big focus on, on that. So um, the stuff we're going to be working on today is inspired a lot by what uh, some of our tools in Reach UI, and we'll talk more about that later, I'm sure. But that's a, a general overview of who I am and the kind of stuff I work on. Awesome. So, Reach UI, what what makes it different from other component libraries? Well, there are uh, no doubt a lot of component libraries out there, especially for React. Um, so, Reach UI. Uh, it, it has over. There's a lot of overlap with some libraries, and it's very different in, in a lot of ways from others. Um, we don't uh, do anything as far as uh, we don't care about the look or feel of your app, and we're not trying to build you a design system. We're trying to give you tools, uh, low-level tools, to build your design system on top of. So we don't have any opinions as far as uh, what your application looks like, what these components look like. That's up to you. So what ReachUI is is it's a very low-level tool that you can build onto to add uh, your brand, your look and feel, but it's, uh, its focus is on the functionality and the accessibility of those components. Um, with accessibility, it's, it's sort of a mixed bag because there's a lot of stuff that we can do for you by default, but as I'm sure you know, as a lot of folks probably know, the, uh, the accessibility of your application is largely context-based. So some of the things we can't do um, and we try to provide helpful uh, developer experience type things to uh, to sort of guide folks on how to make things more accessible for things like labeling and that sort of thing. Um, but we do everything that we can for the things that we can't do. We try and help as best we can through documentation and through um, developer experience uh, tweaks. But, but yeah, that's kind of what it is. There's a lot of other component libraries like you know the material UIs of the world that are very opinionated with lots of styles baked in and sort of styling mechanisms baked in. Uh, we don't do any of that. We have some like base level CSS that we include if you want to use it, but then everything else is sort of up to you to adopt uh, as you need and make it your own thing. Very cool. Yeah. So of of all the people who could possibly be talking to us about like uh, what we're going to be doing today, which is building accessible tab components, like. Uh, you've definitely got a lot of experience in that regard, thanks to your work on Reach UI and, and beyond. So. Yeah, I've, I've been working on all of these types of components for a long time. There's a lot of overlap with tabs and a lot of the other components that we use. And we'll, I'm really excited to break into it and talk about it because, uh, you know, people reach for tools like Reach UI, and, and I don't want to convince you not to as someone who works on mm -hmm. Reach UI. I love that people use it, um, but I also think that uh, sometimes a lot of these things, uh, we, we can overcomplicate them in our minds, and it's nice to help people demystify what's actually going on and, and what's important about these tools. So um, that's what I'm really stoked to talk about today and sort of break that down. I think we can we can do a really killer job here in the next hour or so. Yeah. All right. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, we do have a bit of uh, starter code here that I'm going to 
send you all the link to, but I've gone ahead and installed everything, set things up locally. Um, it is, you've already gone in and added stuff to a Create React app uh, project. Um, and if I start it, we, we, we will see what we've got to start with. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and tell your viewers uh, to watch out for my claps because yes. <laughs> as we were discussing before, uh, I know this is a live show and, and, and all that, but I've had been having some issues with my audio. So like if it, if it just drops out, if I peak my audio at work, so occasionally I'll just clap and that's what it's for. So, uh, or you can, if you're watching and you feel like you said something worth clapping for that could maybe you can pretend I'm clapping for you. There we go. There we go. Um, and go ahead and put your uh, clapping emojis in the, the chat for solidarity, I guess. We, we need the engagement. We'll, we'll take That's anything great. we can get. Um, okay, yeah, so you, you built out this project ahead of time. Uh, would you like to talk us through what we're going to be doing today? Yeah, so uh, this is what we call a tabs component. It's a very familiar UI for a lot of us, I think. But essentially, you've got, uh, so we've got this this phony store that I, that I baked up here where you can, uh, I guess maybe purchase jokes um, on the on the joke store, and uh, if you're logged into the joke store and you want to see which jokes you've you've purchased, uh, that's what we're looking at here. And we've got this tabs component to show our order history, and we're we're breaking these orders um, down by uh, different types There's types of orders, categories, what have you. Uh, you can see all orders, pending orders, or fulfilled orders, depending on which tab is is highlighted. So if you try and click or activate any of the tabs at the moment, they're not going to actually work. So um, what we're going to do is A, make them functional, um, B, build an actual uh, composable set of components that we can that we can use in anywhere in our application when we're using tabs, and uh, C, we're going to make it accessible so that you can activate these tabs with your keyboard, screen reader users have context, and all of the things that are going to make this a really uh, accessible component. That's exciting. I'm so here for this. Uh, okay, so we've we've got the the project running. We've got the the code installed. Where would you like us to start, Chance? Yeah. So uh, I normally uh, we we tried this whole live share thing too, and it's another <laughs> thing that from a uh, I'm having issues. It's just not not wanting to work for me. So I'm going to test my ability to sort of walk you through everything as best I can. Um, so. What we're going to start is if you go into the source directory, you're going to see our, all of our application files, all of our components and everything. Uh, and what we're going to be looking at, you're more than welcome to start the app and, and go down. That's how I get a feel for the app. Uh, but what we're looking at is uh, the dashboard in particular. So at the dashboard path, we are rendering this dashboard component. And in the dashboard component, we have this orders thing. And the orders right now, we have all of the markup that is responsible for rendering these tabs that we see. Um, and if you go through, you'll notice that it's just a bunch of divs, basically, with containers, with class names, with styles. And I think this is where a lot of people, when they're building components like this, kind of start and finish. You know, they'll probably add in the functionality. We, we want functional stuff. But um, as we're looking at this markup, it's something that is clear to folks who work on accessibility a lot is that we're, we're missing a lot of context as to what these things actually are and what they do. And this is going to be a problem for our screen reader users, for keyboard users. Um, and lots of other users for that matter. So what we need to do is we need to start working on these tabs to uh, to make them accessible, right? Um, so the way I like to start this exercise and um, start by building any accessible component is think about the pattern that I'm using and then check to see if uh, WCAG already has a pattern established for us that we can lean on to know what we need to do to make this an accessible component. So uh, the first thing that I'm gonna do as a developer is open the WCAG documentation for the um, the ARIA practices uh, page, which I, I think you, are, you might have open already, yeah. but might not. Um, I, I typically look at 1.2 just because things have changed a lot in the past few years, but I think for tabs, it's the same either way if you're looking at 1.1 or 1.2. But uh, yeah, should, we can take a look. There is a tab panel pattern established. And so, um, Ben, do you want to uh, do you, I'm sure a lot of your users know, but do you want to explain what, what we're looking at here? Yeah, so this is um, the World Wide Web Consortium is the organization that puts together all the web standards for, for HTML and for CSS and for um, a lot of the like accessibility interactions that um, a website might have. And um, so some of the specs that they put together are the ARIA specs for using ARIA attributes to 
uh, curate an accessible experience for uh, assistive technology users, such as people who use screen readers. Um, but there's a lot that goes into ARIA. There's a lot of compatibility stuff, and you have to use certain roles and attributes with other roles and attributes. And, and so you can't just have a, a page that's just like, here's all the roles and here's all the attributes. Um, you have to actually provide some example patterns that you can follow that in theory, um, and I understand that compatibility isn't always perfect, but in theory, these patterns should get you at least close to good enough most of the time. Yeah, I like to think of it as kind of a, a shim uh, for what's missing in HTML, right? Like we have mm -hmm. a lot of things baked into HTML that we can use to get a lot of functionality for free. Uh, a lot of us are always talking about use a button instead of a div, use a button instead of an anchor tag when you want an action instead of a link, right? And the reason for that is because it, the button is actually a pretty powerful HTML element. It's got a lot of stuff baked in, mm -hmm. right? It's got keyboard, um, actions baked into it. So you don't have to wire those up yourself, which is great. Um, but HTML doesn't have that sort of low level primitive element for every type of UI and where those things are missing, we turn to Aria uh, as as guidance for a lot of the more common UIs that we want to build in the web, and, which is great. It's a, it's a really great resource. And as you mentioned, it's not always perfect, but it's going to get us a long way if we, if we follow it pretty closely and then, and then test for our users, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so this is what we're going to be doing or using as our guide. So uh, if I'm reading the tabs um, spec, as as we call it, we say spec, but it's, it's I don't like the word spec for this. It's like more of more of guidance. It's right? a recommendation. It's just to test. Yeah, yeah, it's recommendation. Because yeah. you still want to. Oh, you should, yep, there we go. <laughs> you still want to make sure stuff actually works, which requires testing and all, all of the things that we know and love to do. But we're going to start here. Um, if we. Uh, take a look at this uh, somewhere along the line. It's going to tell us that there's a couple of different ways we could approach um, activating tabs. There's this automatic activation, and then there's this idea of manual activation. And generally speaking, for for tabs, unless you're doing some sort of asynchronous data lo uh, loading where it takes a long time for individual tab content to load, and you need to uh, lazy load it or or whatever. Generally speaking, automatic is the way to go for user experience. So okay. um, what I'm going to do is instead of using the the spec itself, the guidance itself, I'm going to take a look at this example, the tabs with automatic activation example, because it's going to have all of the, the stuff um, outlined for us. And I just find uh, these examples a little easier to follow. Okay. Um, so it actually gives you a working example of the tabs component. Um, it gives you some example code you can use, but of course we're using React. So the mechanisms for dealing with state and those things are going to be a little different for us. So, um, but it's a really good start. So um, we take a look, we've got some accessibility features. It talks about things like keyboard support. Um, and then we have a table. This is the, the table I'm going to start with for this exercise that tells us each breakdown of every single part of our tabs component and what, uh, a attributes and, uh, yeah, the HTML attributes that we need for those components. So, um, now that we've got this up, what I'm going to ask you to do is, is take a look at the reach UI page you've got pulled up in another tab. Yeah. And um, let's talk a minute about um, about APIs for components. Uh, so this is something that we teach a lot with React training. Um, selfless, shame, uh, shameless self plug, I think is what I'm trying to say. Uh, I've got a workshop coming up on this exact topic in a few weeks. So we'll uh, have a link to this, I'm sure, at some point in the stream. But I just want to mention, if you're interested in, in this kind of stuff at all, um, this is something that I can teach you in much more depth later on. But what we're going to uh, be talking about is API design for our tabs component. Like, what is our uh, oh, there we go. All right. So what is our what is our interface going to look like for the components that consume our tabs? Um, and what I'm going to base this on is this idea of compound components, where we actually have multiple parts as individual components that we can use. And this API is really nice for a lot of reasons. Uh, there's a lot of folks want to put all of their data at the top and feed everything down through config props. Um, but React gives us this, these nice composition patterns through the usage of children that we can use to compose our uh, our elements in a variety of different ways. Like if we wanted the tab list on top, we could put it on top. If we wanted it on bottom, we could put it on bottom by just simply moving these components around. And so I really like this way of composing um, my, my low level components. And that's how we're going to, to do this exercise is we're going to mirror this API. So this is what I 
ultimately want my tabs API to look like. Okay. So if we go back into our code, we, again, we see we've got all this markup and it's pretty, pretty close to what we're going to be using in tabs. So um, what I might do here is go into, if, if you scroll to the top, you see I've got some import statements uh, pulling in some stuff from this tabs file that I've already started for you. And we can go ahead and take a look at that file. Um, and so what you see here is just kind of a shell for, cause I just wanted to save some time. Um, but anytime, uh, just a couple of things to go over here. Anytime I'm creating these types of components, these really low level components, I want to, I want to make them as close to like if they were a baked in HTML component as possible, meaning that I want to be able to pass along any props I want. I want to be able to, to do, to use refs for DOM refs and that sort of thing. Uh, and it's really helpful to also stick to the whole one DOM node per component rule for that sort of reason. So if you've got, if you're rendering one DOM node in a component, uh, it that belongs in one component. So it makes it a lot easier to deal with passing props around to these different parts. Does that make sense? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, I, I like that modularity there. That yes. Yeah. So the uh, we use the React Forward Ref API, which if you're uh, not familiar with this, that lets us take refs from anywhere else in uh, that's passed into that component and forward it to a very specific DOM node so that we can use uh, DOM refs if we need them for things like focus management or measurement or anything else you might need DOM refs for. We want to forward the ref from the parent component on down to the underlying DOM node that we render. React doesn't do that for you by default, so it's not passed as a regular prop. You have to forward that ref down so that it knows which node to attach to. Um, so that's what we're looking at here for the most part. And it, it's pretty much just a shell with a lot of the things that we're going to need already uh, wired up. So we have all of the, we have all of the, all right, the sound thing is, is, is fun. <laughs> um, we've got all the parts that we need sort of created here for us. So what we want to do now is we want to go back to our ARIA uh, guidelines and start looking at the different attributes that we need for all of the parts. Um, so I might go into, if you look at the tab list, so the tab list is, we've got a tab list component. So I want to go ahead and start by adding a role to my tab list component of the, to match what the spec tells us, which is role of tab list. And there we go. All right. Tab list is up here. Okay. So I would go to Seems like you're saying role equals tab list. Like that? That's the one. Yep. Just like that. Uh, yep. And then I would go uh, and take a look. The next thing we need to do to our tab list, I believe, if you go back to the, uh, we, we have this ARIA label, right? Now, ARIA label, we don't really know what that's going to be, right? Because that's mm -hmm. context related. We need the context of the application for that. So we actually don't necessarily want to pre-assign an ARIA label to our tabs. We just want to pass it along, right? We want to accept it from the parent component and just forward it along. So if we go back to the code, we just make sure that we're forwarding all of our props down. Uh, and we are, we're, we're spreading all, all of our props in there. Okay. So the idea is, is whoever is using the tab list component would provide as one of the props ARIA label and that yep. would just get magically forwarded on. Okay. Exactly. We're just passing it along. Um, so that's that's pretty much done, and I think we're we're good to uh, move on from that particular component for now. Let me go, I'm trying to pull my reference up separately since my uh, live share is not working out. Yeah. So um, is there? Because it seems like the ARIA label is is one of those like best practices to have for a tab list like this. Is there a way you would recommend uh, building this API to encourage tab list consumers to provide Absolutely. ARIA label? Yeah, so there's a couple ways. Um, first of all, if you're using TypeScript, you could just make it a, re a required prop potentially. I would probably not do that for a couple of reasons. One, um, an accessible label can be inferred a number of different ways. So we have ARIA label or we have ARIA labeled by. Uh, Either of those are valid, right? Mm -hmm. um, so maybe a better approach to me for this particular case would be to uh, create like a use effect or something that checks these props on every render to make sure that we have one or the other. And then it like, uh, I think in reach what we do, um, don't quote me on this, I'd have to check. I think what we might do is we um, we actually do a query selector to make sure if you have ARIA labeled by that it actually can find oh. the right label, right? Um, so there's a couple of different ways you could you could um, approach that. Um, 
but I would generally handle it by a checking the environment to make sure that we're don't, we're only like tossing warnings and and stuff out on dev, and then um, have just some sort of effect that checks to make sure that we've always got an accessible label there. Interesting. Okay. Very cool. Uh, yeah. So I think for tab list. Uh, so the next thing we need to do for tab list. We'll, we'll come back to this actually and, and hit all these. But let's just go ahead and knock through this table real quick. So the next thing we want to look at is our tab. So our tab component is going to have uh, several potential things that we need to to do to it. So we need this um, first of all the role, the role of tab, right? Yep. Uh, right. Yep. So add a role of tab. And another thing we notice is that tab actually is recommended that we use a button for this. So I might. Um, so, something that you'll notice here is that I use this as prop. So if you take a look at the props that I've already set up for all of the elements, I'm, I'm doing this as thing. Um, I like doing this too for low level components and we do this for reach UI as well so that you can render, you can actually render whatever element you would like under the hood. Um, and even though we have recommended elements, we have things that are better if you use these elements, there are going to be times and contexts in which you, that might not be appropriate. Maybe for the overall tabs component, you actually want it to be a section. Maybe for individual tabs, maybe there actually are some nested interactive things going on and it needs to be a div. So there are times when you need to bail out of the default and do your own thing, uh, which will require some additional work for accessibility in that case. But um, for this example, we can keep it simple and just set that default of um, that default value from div to button. And then when we actually return and render that tab, let's just render the element. So now whatever the element or the as prop is uh, set to will be rendered by default. We have a button, so it's great. It's going to save us a lot of work here. Uh, and let's go check that table again, see what's next. All right, so we have a couple of ARIA things. ARIA selected. Um, just true or false, and then tab index of negative one, but it would be tab index of zero if they selected active tab, uh, if we're working with the active tab, and then we've got this ARIA controls things. All right, so let's go back to our code real quick, and let's just knock these out one at a time. So we've got ARIA selected is our first ARIA prop. Let's All go right. ahead and add that. We got it. I'm going to, I think, also break stuff out into multiple lines at this point. We have prettier installed. Yeah. I, I, I lean on prettier so much. There, there we go. go. Beautiful. Aha. So Aria selected. Uh, and this I can't be... work without prettier anymore. I don't know about you, but it's the best. <laughs> oh man. Um yeah, I keep forgetting that I have the option to just like format in one <laughs> click. Um, oh, that's amazing. Yeah. Uh, okay. So one thing that I might do here is I would go ahead and say uh, just We'll come back to this because we haven't got this far yet, but just create a variable uh, right above the return statement that just call it is active and set it to false for now. And then aria selected can just be the value is active. And so we'll we'll wire all that up later, but now we at least have a reference to that because we're going to need it in a couple of places. So uh, we've got is active here. We also want to uh, do tab index. That's uh, something that we saw in the table. Yeah. Do a tab index, and then if is active is true, then our tab index should be zero. And if it's not true, it should be negative one. And the reason for this is because the way the keyboard users are going to want to navigate tabs is with the arrow keys. We're going to have to wire all that up separately. But when you're tabbing through um, your tabs, what you the tabs uh, the tab order that's suggested by the guidelines here is that your tab uh, from outside the tabs component when you get to the tabs component is going to hit the active tab and then you're going to tab to the tab itself so that you can immediately read that content mm. because that's kind of like the the flow right you, you get the section header which is the tab and the content and if you want to change tabs you actually navigate with the arrow keys um, yeah. so the way i've always the, thought of it is it's like you're focusing on the tab list as a group um and yeah. like it, it announces the the current tab but um because of that you don't want like every button or every tab to be individually focusable, especially if there's a whole bunch of those uh, tabs. So exactly. You're just disabling the, the focus uh, if the tab is inactive. Okay. Very cool. Yeah. So, okay. So we've got uh, tab index wired up and we've got, I think ARIA controls was the other one that I saw. 
Let's go ahead and take a look at that. So ARIA controls, it says it has this ID ref thing. What is that all about? So it retur uh, refers to the tab panel element associated with the tab. All right. So we got a couple of things we have to do now. We have to have a stable identifier for our tab so that our point, our button can point to it, right? So we've got potentially multiple tabs. We don't know yet because we're just creating a generic wrapper component. We don't know how many tabs there will be. We don't know which tab we're rendering. Um, we do know that we could also have multiple tabs components on the same page, right? We could have a tabs group here, tabs group there. There could be 20 tabs groups, right? We also know that in HTML, an identifier has to be, you, you can only have one element, a, a single ID on a given page at a time, right? So we need all of our tabs to be some somewhat I, uniquely identifiable. So this is a little tricky. React doesn't give us, um, a lot of guidance here and it's kind of left up to users to implement this on their own. So um, in reach UI, we have a tool called uh, a hook called use ID that helps you okay. uh, generate server safe, um, unique identifiers. And I don't even know if we render them on the server now that I'm thinking about it. I don't think we do. Uh, there are some other tools that uh, different folks have, uh, have approached this problem in multiple ways. And eventually I know the react team is going to give us a, an official hook for this. I've heard that but at the moment. Yeah, it's like use opaque identifier, I think, is the Which is a wild experimental thing. API. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like I get why, like if you read the issue that explains it, it's it does sort of make sense, but it's not intuitive. And I don't know, it might not even stay that way. They may change it again, so who knows. But in the meantime, we have to do this ourselves. So um, what I have, what, can you hear? No. Nope. Uh there we go. All right. So what I have wired up is uh, a, a kind of a naive implementation of a unique identifier uh, generator, uh, but it'll work for these purposes. Not going to get into the nuts and bolts, but you can look at it if you'd like. But we've already imported it into tab. So what we're going to do here is a couple things. First, we need a unique identifier for the root tabs thing itself, right? Because again, we can have multiple tabs components on the page at a time and we want each one to have its own kind of instance ID, ID. And so what I want, I don't want to rely on users to have to pass this and keep track of unique IDs on a page. That's kind of a pain. So I'm what I'm going to do or ask you to do is in tabs, I want you to uh, set a variable of tabs ID inside the component. Um, we'll say tabs ID is equal to and we'll call use ID. And actually uh, backspace, get rid of use ID for a minute. We'll actually call uh, there's a helper function at the bottom called make ID, and we'll call that. I'll explain this in a second. Uh, make ID, okay. Yeah, it's just going to take uh, a bunch of different parts and and string them together. Um, it's just a slight small helper function to expedite the process here. We'll call make ID, and we'll we'll say the first argument is uh, the string of tabs, and the second argument is just uh, we'll call use ID. And so what this is going to do is it's going to create an identifier is going to be a tabs string dash some number that'll be incremented as we render new tabs components. So we've mm -hmm. we've stamped this tabs component with a an ID that's just a number, right? Makes sense. So yeah. if we call use ID elsewhere, it's just going to give us a number. But we might want to use ID for other types of components. So we want to prepend that tabs string to say this is our tabs instance. So we got a tabs ID, and what I want to do here is I want to pass this tabs ID through context. So okay. I would create some context here at the top. You just call it tabs context. And I think um, a, lot of, a lot of folks use context to do things like global state, uh, and it's great for global state management and React applications. Uh, but it's also really great for implicit state when dealing with these sort of compound components where you're always going to use a tab list or a tab inside of a tabs component. Like it doesn't make sense outside of that context. So in the tabs context, it makes sense that we reach for context to do to pass around data implicitly. I so, cannot believe I've never thought of using context with composition like this. That's brilliant. Oh, it's great. Yeah. Oh, that's so yeah. good. Um, no, I love that. So let's uh, let's go ahead and wrap our children inside of a context provider. Would you want to do wrap this whole thing in there or just the children? Does it matter? You uh well technically yes. It doesn't like practically, but um when context changes it's gonna re-render everything underneath it. 
um, and we don't necessarily need to re-render that outer yep, component, so we can just pass it to the one right underneath it. But honestly, in this in practice, it probably won't make a real difference here. So we're just going to render our provider here, and then pop children up in there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to pass a value, and we'll go ahead and just create an object there, and then pass tabs ID. Right. Now we've got some context wired up. Let's actually go and, and use it to do what we were trying to do to begin with. So go back down to our tab. And what I want to do is I want to get context from use context. Um, context. We, there's probably a better name for this. Here. Nah, it'll work. And so you could also just destructure it if you want, since we know we're going to get an object back. Yeah. Uh, but if you wanted to handle errors, if for whatever reason there was no context, we could potentially uh, throw an error there, a more helpful dev error there. But for this exercise, this should be fine. We'll just use it right. Mm -hmm. But uh, we've got our tabs ID now. So now what we can do is we need an I, we need a pointer for ARIA controls to a tab, or a tab panel, rather. So what I'm going to do is say, um, set another variable, and we'll call it panel ID. And I'm going to call that, I'll call make ID again, which will just be our helper. So we'll ensure that we have a consistent format here. Pass your tabs ID. And then pass a string of a uh, panel. And then pass a, a variable called index. And just set, for now, just set index to zero. We'll, we'll come back to the index thing. Actually, back up. Let me, let me, let me do something a little different here. Okay. Let's, not use, let's not worry about the index. Um, let's say value, uh, our strategy here. So we need some way for our panel and our tab to point to one another. If you look at the API that we're building, so in reach UI, we don't ask you to pass a value. Um, and that's for convenience and you, you really probably don't want to have to pass values all the time, but it's actually more complicated than you think to try and make these associations mm -hmm. since our tabs and our our um, our tabs and our panels are in two separate containers. They don't live in the same container, so we don't have any way to group them naturally. The only way that we group them is by order, right? Yeah. So you could group them by checking the index in each associated list, which also is kind of a struggle to do. Um, but what we're going to do to just simplify the process is make you pass a ta a value prop to both your tab and your tab panel. And okay. if those value props match up, then we'll associate those two. So go ahead and, and accept a, a value prop from that uh, props object. Does, does that make sense, the yeah. way I explain that? Yeah. Uh, uh, yes. So you're going to have whoever's using the tab component, they're, they're going to have to pass for, for each tab, they're going to have to pass a value. And for each tab panel, they're going to have to pass a value. And a tab and its panel are linked if they share the same value. That's right, and um, we, we'll we'll try and like talk about that a little bit more if we have time later. But there's there's some reasons for for this decision, even though it's a probably less than stellar DevX for this particular component. Uh, it's going to be good enough for now, and it's it's not too bad to be honest with you. I don't really mind it. So we'll just uh, and most of the time when you're rendering these things, you're going to be iterating through a list anyway, so it's probably not that much work. Um, but yeah, anyway, so we'll, we've got this value prop now. Um, we're making a panel identifier here. Let's go ahead and say ARIA uh, controls is equal to that panel ID. And so while you, while you have all that code, I would copy, basically copy that panel ID from here and go ahead and pop that in the panel so we don't forget to identify the panel. I dig it. Uh, uh, that's the okay. panels group, so uh, down one more. Yes, I, I got you. That makes sense. And so we'll need to get that tabs ID. We'll get, need to get the tabs ID from context there as well. And then also need to get a value prop in our panel. Perfect. So now we, since our make ID is consistent, it's pure and all that stuff, uh, we know that that ID is going to match. So we can just pass it along. Cool. Um, and dig this, we're going to need to do this again. Uh, okay. Because once we get down to the panel, we're going to see the panel needs to have an ARIA labeled by association with the button. So it's a two-way association. Oh, so let's go okay. ahead and create a button ID right below panel ID and just change out the string of panel to button. You got it. 
So now we've got IDs that are associated with the unique instance of the tabs uh, based on the unique value that is required for panels and, and tabs themselves and then whether or not it's a, pa a panel or a button. So it's pretty good chance these are gonna be un unique. So I feel good about this. So let's go ahead and pass uh, ARIA labeled by to our panel here. And so if you've never seen ARIA labeled by, um, every element needs, uh, especially when they're interactive elements like buttons, um, needs to have uh, what's called an accessible name. This is how it's identified um, within assistive technology. This is how it's exposed to assistive technology users. So like for buttons, that's typically um, the contents, the text contents of that button. Um, so if you want the name of one element to be populated by the contents of another element, like some vis like visible label that you can see on screen, you can use ARIA labeled by. So this is taking the ID of our button, it's gonna find whatever the text contents of this element, whatever those text contents are, and that's gonna become the name of this panel. So when the user navigates to the panel, they'll hear that this is, you know, jokes. Or, or whatever other panels that we've got. Yeah, that's right. And this is really important for our panel because our panel is, is going to be basically like a region. So we have the, uh, the user is going to be able to tab to that panel so that we can read the content from it and it needs to point back to that button which serves as the label. So it, that's where the association works for panels specifically. Uh, it's a good explanation, by the way, of the accessible label. I like that. Um, we also could pass an explicit ARIA label, which would override ARIA labeled by if we wanted to, if we wanted to change that association for whatever reason. Okay, so um, for instance, maybe the panel's got a full name, right, a long name, but the tab itself is like a shortened version of the name. Yeah, exactly. So uh, in our case, actually, I think I'm using, I'm doing something for that, um, but I'm using a visually hidden component instead. Mm -hmm. But you could, instead of uh, the visually hidden component trick, you could uh, also just pass your own ARIA label, which would override are you labeled by there's a whole algorithm for calculating the the accessible name uh that we we'll, probably won't get into but it mm -hmm. you know if you have multiple clashes the browser has a way to figure out what's the right one Excellent. um so yeah i think this is good but we need to also uh, let's copy that button id and actually assign it to the our button as well let's not forget that makes sense Bar. All right. I think someone's uh, mowing the lawn outside, so if it got noisy oh, nice. all of a sudden, I apologize. But <laughs> so we've got our button ID here on our button. Feel pretty good about that. Um, and let's go back and take a look at that ARIA table again, see what's next. So we've got a uh, tab panel. Uh, see, we did ARIA label by us. So we need a tab index of zero on the active tab panel. Okay, so on the active tab panel, that was good. Yeah, so um, it, it so yes, and we'll we'll check to see if uh, it's active too. So let's go ahead and um, same thing we did above. We'll, we'll say is active, and we'll just make it a, a false for now. And then yeah, so then t our tab index is going to be uh, zero if is active is true. Otherwise. Row. Negative, Otherwise, go ahead and negative one, I think it's fine. Yep. Uh, or even undefined is probably fine because the div doesn't have any ability to tab by default. So um, yeah, okay, so let's uh, go ahead and change that div actually to our element thing. It'll render okay. a div by default. Might be good to go ahead and do that for everything, everywhere we didn't already do that. Yeah. For some reason, the uh, format document isn't like picking up the like multiple props, whatever. Yes, I, I think it depends on your your overall mm -hmm. line length setting in Prettier. So until it gets to a certain length, it doesn't want to do that. But let me find the element here. Elements being used there. Use element there. Also element. That's all of them. Cool. That feels pretty good. Yeah. Uh, cool. So uh, back to our tab. We have one more thing. Our tab panel is we want to use a hidden attribute to hide our tab panel if it's not active. So um, it's going to have the opposite logic of tab index. So go ahead and add a hidden prop. 
And I would say if not active, exactly like that, go ahead and set to true. You Otherwise, just okay. set it to undefined. Oh, okay. Gotcha. That way it just goes away altogether. Because I think most override style sheets just look to see if the hidden uh, oh. uh, attribute is there at all. And if it is there at all, sometimes it'll hide. So we just, just want to exclude it. Cool. Um, okay, cool. So I feel pretty good about our tab panel. Um, let's go back to our, uh, our spec, our guidelines, if you will. And I think I feel pretty good about all that stuff. So let's uh, let's go back up. And the next thing we need to do is we need to look at this keyboard support. Actually, before we do that, do you mind if we uh, just verify in the in the live project that like all oh. of our attributes are coming across of everything? Yeah, absolutely. So we're not actually rendering anything right now. So this might actually be a good time to oh, render yeah. some stuff. Let's do that. Uh, so uh, before we do, because this is going to break the way some stuff looks, um, let's talk about composition a little bit because we've we've talked about it already in terms of, in the context of our our components themselves. But we also have to if we're building these low level library uh, kind of things like like these tabs that we might use in different contexts. We also might want to pass if we're styling them, for example, I'm just using SAS for styling here. So we might want to override some styles, pass our own custom styles, but we still need to, to bring in the styles that are baked in, right? Um, because the baked in styles are also going to be somewhat important for accessibility. So what I've done here is I've got these internal class name variables in every component uh, just to match up with what I've put in our style sheets. Um, but we want to also accept um, class names from external uh, consumers of this component. So what I'm going to do is pass a class name prop to each of my components. Okay. So we we've got class. We're going to do. You can you can do a go back to the top and we'll just do this once and copy paste everywhere because it's going to be okay. exactly the same for every component. Cool. Um, so in your element um, where you're rendering your element, just pass a class name. And I'm importing this utility from a library called CLSX. Uh, that's just called, uh, I've called it composed class names. And this is going to just take multiple class names and compose them together so that what we ultimately render is going to be a, a composed version of our internal class name and whatever comes from our prop, exactly like that. And we can copy this down all the way down. You may be familiar with this library or another library called class names that does exactly the same thing. Um, I think this one's just slightly faster. Okay. Um, and it has TypeScript built in, which is nice. So we'll just go ahead and make sure we implement that everywhere. So now we are composing our internal class names. This will at least make sure that our tabs still look the same when we start rendering them. Cool. Uh, cool. All right. So now if we go back to our dashboard, we can replace um, a lot of our markup with what we have created here. So at the top where we see class name of tabs, just wipe out all of that and render tabs. And tabs. And do the same thing for tab uh, tab list. There's got to be a way to just like replace this. At some point, I will I have, learn. I have a plugin for that, in, or an extension in VS Code. I don't know what it's called, but uh, okay. without it, I don't. I don't think it will work by default. I will have to look. It that is up a shame. Yeah. All right, and these. And then each each of those will be a tab. Yep, and you can wipe out all of the. Um, we're still going to lose some rendering here because we haven't wired our is active thing, but that's okay. All right, then this would be our tab panels. Tab panels. While I'm doing this, how is the weather over there? It's been dreary here all day. Oh, I didn't even think to ask. Where Where are you located? I'm in the DFW area. Oh, cool. Okay. I'm in San Diego, so it, I, I feel guilty because the weather's all, always kind of nice. Gotcha. For the most part. At least it's all relative. People here complain about it when it's like even remotely gray outside, but I still love it. I, I've only lived here for like two years or so, but it's nice. It's, I don't know. It's like 70 degrees out, I'm assuming. All right. I haven't checked. I, I don't, I barely look at the weather anymore. It's kind of tragic. Gotcha. Do you, did you want me to nuke the class names as well? Because these are the class yeah, names. Yeah, we, we're already there. passing those down, so cool. we can knock those out. Do a whole bunch of stuff here. And I think we can also nuke the hiddens, right? Because that's yep. all handled now. Nuke the hiddens, any of the, I think there's a data selected on one of them we can get rid of. Yeah, there was one. Um, up. Yeah. 
So yeah, I think we, once you have all, yeah, I think we're good. So um, everything else is what's inside the tab panel. So we can keep that as is. And if you save that, I suspect we'll not see some stuff because we, we need to wire up what's actually hidden or not. But, but it's fine because we can at least check our markup, right? Yeah, so we've got the roll tab, we've got our ID, we've got the ARIA controlled, ARIA selected, uh, all of that fun stuff. And then if I dive into, I think we, wait, no, there is no tab panels role. So this is That's fine. right. So uh, some of these are just presentational wrappers. So our tab panels group is not actually, there's no corresponding um thing for us in the spec, but we, we like it because it helps us with some styling just to have that container there. Same with our, it's actually the same with our actual top level wrapper too. You'll notice we don't have any sort of role there. Okay. Um, we get all of the information we need from the tab list and the individual tabs and individual panels. Did notice that uh, we missed the role equals tab panel. Oh, good, uh, good call. is tab panel and that should get us all yeah. the way there and I just refresh just to make sure um tab panels role is tab panel excellent and if I go investigate the um accessibility tree we can see that uh yeah it's it's got all the stuff that we would expect it to expose to assistive technology so it's going to point to tab one button for its name, it's going to announce that it's a tab panel. Very cool. I love that you uh, you show that too. I think uh, a lot of folks miss out on some of the features we have in our dev tools these days. It's, it's yeah, a pretty nice. So if you've never seen this before, this is the accessibility tree. So your browser does a lot of magic for you behind the scenes. And one of the things of magic it does is it creates a, effectively an alternate version of your DOM that's specifically in a uh, format that. Uh, assistive technologies such as screen readers can parse. And so this accessibility tree is, like, that's what that is. Um, but Chrome, I know Firefox and Safari, I believe, also give, um, like, a, a dialogue that you can actually, like, navigate the tree and see the, the representation of your page that screen readers actually receive as well, which is very cool. Yeah, it's great. And we notice it's not rendered at all because we've hidden stuff, right? So we need to fix that probably. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's, let's go ahead and do that too, so we can actually see. Let's figure out this is active thing. So uh, back up in the top, um, I'm going to do a couple of things. I'm going to, I'm going to pass something along to my context um, at the at the top level that we created. Okay. I'm going to pass a function, uh, not to the uh, default value of the context, but into value itself. Um, yeah. So in that object, we're passing tabs ID. Um, go ahead and pass a a method here and call it is active. And I'm, I, all right, let's make it a property because I actually want to uh, memoize this and uh, set it to use callback because if we need to use this for whatever reason, I want to make sure. Anytime I'm using or passing functions via context, I like to use callback to memoize them because oftentimes you need to use those references uh, in like a use effect somewhere and you don't want that reference changing. Yeah. Uh, and once you don't want to over or pre-optimize and react too much. Um, but when I'm using context, I like to try and memoize pretty early for these sort of things because it's I almost always need to. So let me um, go ahead and wrap that function in react.useCallback. And go ahead and start with an empty dependency array for that. Perfect. And now in the implementation here, my I, I want this to accept a value, this callback to accept a value. Because what we're going to do is we're just going to have a method for each of our tabs and tab panels to check to see if it's active, right? Okay. And so go ahead and return uh, value triple equals active value. Now we're going to create this active value thing next. So what I want to do here is I want to create some state now in the top of my tree with use state. And we'll go ahead and the first value of use state will be our active value. And then we'll get a setter, set active value. And we'll say the d default value of this is going to be, it's going to come from a default value prop. So let's say the default value can potentially be passed as a prop. And then the default state will be default value. And if none is set, we'll just default to null. 
is nullified. All right, so now we have an active value potentially. We're going to initialize it potentially. And now let's also pass set active value through context as well. We can just pass that reference directly. And of course, our linter is helping us out here. We need to uh, add that dependency on value or active value. There you go. Cool. So feeling pretty good. We've got these things through context. Now we can go in uh, where we're setting it, uh, act, is active to false in each of the tabs and tab panel. We can just get that is active um, method from context. And we can actually check based on the value that we get from the, va the value prop. Uh, you'll have to, there's a name class. I didn't think about that. So maybe rename it to is, uh, or uh, check is active or something like that. Yeah, whatever you got to do to. Yeah, let's see. I, um, maybe I just say active. It, yeah, that's. I understand parentheses. I. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Uh, cool. So, uh, yeah, I'll no, just check that pass value into is active now. Uh, so yes, because we are passing it. Yep, and then do the same in your panel. Copy paste this into panel. Uh, I understand commas too. I promise. All right, there we go. So we can do that. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Cool. cool. Um, now go back into your dashboard and pass a default value. Um, to at the top level, and we'll need to actually pass values along the way too. So um, this is something that you, like I said, we could we could build this in a way where you didn't have to explicitly pass this, but it's a lot more involved than you might think. So let's go ahead and say, uh, let's just say all. We'll say all lowercase, and we'll say our first tab is gonna have a value of all. Second will be pending. Third can be fulfilled. And then we can pass the same values to each panel. So now that we have a link between our tab and our tab panel. All right, all right, all right. There we go. All right, Ooh. cool. Now, fingers crossed, let's go back and take a look at our application and see if we are actually rendering anything. Yes. Ooh, no, we're not. Let's, oh, there we go. Oh, yeah, all right, Ooh. perfect. So it's still not operable, but currently we are rendering something. So uh, let's do one more thing. Let's go back to our uh, code in, in tab. Let's set up an on-click handler. Um, yeah. So we want to change the tab on-click. So go ahead and create um, a... Go ahead and uh, create this as a constant, and I'll explain why in a second, but just create constant handle click or on click, doesn't matter. Well, actually call it handle click. I'll That's tell you fine. why in a second. Yep. Um, and now just set up an event listener or an event handler rather, uh, just a function. And uh, what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna say on click set active value to um, this value and then go ahead and get set active value from our context. So we're calling set state at the top. It's gonna set state at the bottom on click. Uh, it, we don't have to check existing state or anything like that because it's just a string value. And if React detects the string hasn't changed, it won't re-render anyway. So this is perfectly sufficient. So just uh, now pass a prop. And so we talked about composition with our class names. What if a user also wants to pass their own event? And oh, okay. they pass a, an on-click prop. And now their on-click is called, but ours never gets called, right? How do we deal with that? So in handle click, one, one thing we could potentially do is we could check the on click prop. Uh, if it was passed, then go ahead and call it first. However, what I'm going to ask you to do instead is where you're calling on click, go ahead and um, pass a handle click as the value to a function. And that function is called compose event handlers. Okay. Or com compose yep. event handlers. Which we'll inspect out here in a second. Now pass the up. Now before handle click, I want you to pass a value of on click that we'll get from props. Now take a look at compose event handlers real quick. Let's look at the implementation, see what's going on here. So with compose event handlers, what we're doing is we're taking two functions 
And what we're returning is a new function. So we're returning a new event handler. And in that event handler, we're going to go ahead and try to call the external, whatever is passed by the user. Um, and if the user calls default, we get that with all of our events, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the browser is going to set a value from that. And it's going to, that value, that property is called default prevented. So we can check to see if the user has tried to prevent yeah. our default behavior. Okay. And if they have, we never even bother calling our internal event handler because they've tried to prevent that, right? So we can bake okay. our custom functionality of our tabs into this whole idea of default behavior, hmm. which makes sense because we're kind of creating our own fake DOM element, right? Yeah. Um, so we can wrap all of our event handlers, and this is a, a really great way to compose event handlers, I think, to, um, to check and make sure, to give users the opportunity to opt in or out of what we're doing internally if they need to. So if they try to click a tab, uh, that for whatever reason is intended to be blocked and we want to show a, a dialogue, okay. right? Instead of activating that tab, we would show a dialogue first to tell them something hopefully useful and so they can go back and, you know, do something before they're able to actually activate that tab. So, um, yeah, that's that's what we're doing here under the hood. So we're just composing as event handlers and unifying them into one. Yeah. So you, you can go back into tabs now. Um, now save that and let's go check and see if our clicks work. Yeah. We'll just give a refresh just in case, and then look at that. Oh, I love it. Yeah. So we have working tabs, at least for mouse users, right? Feels pretty good. Yeah. But, but, <laughs> but, well, here's the cool thing is if you tab to a tab, you can still activate it with your keyboard, right? You can still um, tab to it and... Uh, well, right now you can't because we have a tab index of zero on inactive tabs. So we'll fix that in a second. But um, if you were to somehow land focus on a button and uh, use your uh, your space bar, your enter key, mm -hmm. you'd be able to activate that because we're using a button, right? So mm -hmm. uh, free browsers or free browser behaviors. So let's, uh, but we still need some work for keyboard users because you can't actually hit these inactive tabs. And we, like I mentioned earlier, we wanted to do, do that with our arrow keys. So let's go back to our tab component. We want to set up a, uh, well, let's actually, this will be easier. Let's set up a handle um, handle focus event handler as well. And it can, it can be identical to, to handle click, I believe. Because on focus, we want to automatically activate these tabs. Okay, so can I just uh, do you on... Just copy, yep. Yeah. Okay. Copy all of our implementation so far and just say on click is on focus. First argument of that will be on focus, and we'll get that from props. Oh, I see. Yes. Yep. All right. And then our um, second argument to that will be handle focus, and then we'll just copy that handle click and make it handle focus. Or you could just say handle click. It doesn't really matter. But the uh, we'll just do two separate things because you okay. know maybe down the road we'll want to actually do something different there. You got it. Cool. So we've got, uh, yeah, that works for me. Um, go ahead and uh, I see that we're running up against the clock here. I don't want to like keep everyone too long because we still have a little bit of work to do for keyboard mm -hmm. users. Um, but let's go ahead and get focus um, set up first. So right now, if you focus um, a, an inactive tab for whatever reason, you should set the active value. But right now, we can't focus the inactive tab with our keyboard, right? Mm -hmm. um, so what, another thing we want to do is I know on focus I'm going to set the active tab, but if a tab becomes active because the user is navigating, presumably via keyboard, which we haven't wired up yet, um, we want to then assign focus to that tab if we haven't already, which I know there's a lot of ifs and elses in that statement that are inferred, so we'll mm -hmm. try to explain this a little bit. But let's go ahead and create an effect with use effect. All right. And right before this, uh, before your effect, I want to go ahead and create a ref and call this ref mounted, because I don't want to I don't want to do what we're about to do on the initial render, um, because what we're going to do is focus management, and it's going to be really weird if the user refreshes their browser and doesn't do anything, and focus just goes zap right onto a tab. Right? We don't want that. Um, so we're going to track to make sure that we don't do anything on the initial render, but um, check to say if uh, if mounted if not mounted. Dot current, 
Yeah, I always forget about that dot current. No worries. So if this is not set, let's go ahead and set it. Mounted dot current equals true. And then early return, and we'll never touch it again. So this way we've we've know we know that the first time we run this effect when we initially render, we're not going to bother with it. Right. We're just skipping that render. This is the total um, opposite of autofocus. Yeah, kind of, yeah, absolutely. Um, so now what we want to do is in our uh, dependency array, go ahead and say uh, add is active. Um, so if our is active property changes and it's not the initial render, it means that the user is navigating somehow, right? Um, mm -hmm. And we want to respond to that by focusing. So what I want to do here is I want to uh, create another if statement. I don't want to double focus. So if it's already focused because we've created this handle focus thing that sets the active property. So say if is active, and do we want if, active not is active because we changed the oh yeah yeah you're right you're right you're right i forgot yeah. i forgot good call yeah. so active and then say um and if document dot active element is not equal to the ref that we're rendering but hold on we've got this forwarded ref situation i talked about forward ref but we also need a ref internally because what if the user doesn't pass a ref right okay. they might not pass ref they don't always need one so how do we check this dom node well we're going to have to create an internal ref so i'm going to go back up uh, right above where you created mounted and create another variable called uh that's also calling use ref and call it own ref so we're going to create a ref for us to use internally all right and now when you uh you're checking your active element check to see if it's not equal to own ref dot current now inside this block, if if our if we're not already focused on this particular DOM node, we want to focus it. So call ownref.current. Like I said, always forget that current. That's okay, happens. So uh yeah, so just call focus on that. But we haven't actually set on ref to anything. So now we we have a problem. We have two refs. What on earth do we do with two refs? How do you have two refs? Uh, um yeah. if I say if I say it enough, do you think people will just guess? I doubt it. Um, so I'll try and I'll try and explain. So what do we do with two refs? Well, how do we deal with this in Reach UI? And how do a lot of libraries deal with this problem? Well, we can we've composed a lot of other things. Why can't we just compose our refs and try to assign all of these values to the same underlying value? So that's exactly what we're gonna do. Um right under this effect, you can call, you can define a new variable and call it just ref. And call this uh, call this hook that we've imported at the top called use composed refs. Use now you can check the imp implementation if you want, but inside of here we're just going to pass um, multiple refs, and what we're going to return is a callback ref. So if you're not familiar with callback refs, uh, you can return a callback function uh, instead of a ref value that can also be assigned to a DOM node, and we can do things as a result of assigning that value to this mm -hmm. callback. So we can call back after that ref has been assigned. And so what we're going to do is we're just going to compose all of these things into a singular um, callback. And then we're going to try and do this assign ref trick where we try and assign each ref that we've passed. So if it's forwarded ref, we can pass it the way you would pass a forwarded ref. If it's a ref object internally, we're going to create that. So all of these refs are going to ultimately point to that same exact value. Um, Interesting. So we're just composing these down into a singular callback function, very similar to how we did our event callback or event handler all right now we have this uh so but we actually need to pass our ref so pass in own ref and pass in forwarded ref so now we can assign our ref okay. oh nope you had it well i was gonna move it up uh, okay here. that's fine yeah. keep everything collected okay so assign own ref to no, yeah, go down into where we're rendering the element, and we want to assign the elements ref to that ref variable. Ah, okay. Instead of forwarded ref. Very cool. All right. So now we have, we're doing both, we're magically composing our refs, right? We're doubling up our efforts. The user can pass a ref and do their own imperative stuff. We can use a ref internally and do our own imperative stuff. Everyone's happy. Uh, even though it is kind of a little wacky, it's, it's how we got to do it mm -hmm. until we we have something built in to do it better for us, so. All right, so now what you should be able to do is focus these things and in response to that focus, uh, set the active value. But of course, we still have some pretty gnarly work ahead of us to set up keyboard navigation. We're almost done. Everyone bear with us. So 
in tab, in our tab, we also want a handle key down event handler. All right. Um, and we need to respond to a key down event. Um, go, yeah, go ahead and set that. We're going to also compose this the same way we do all the others. Okay. So go ahead and take an on key down prop from our parent or from our component. I apologize for all of the uh, ordering. I know you had it lovely. You, got the, you, you missed a, uh, a capital D and down. Oh, okay. Got it. There you go. Cool. Yeah. Apologies. I'm just a little close. I suppose if I have to. I suppose. Yep. <laughs> Consistency is all right. It's overrated. <laughs> Consistency is sometimes overrated, but not all the time. It's true. As in everything in life, there's nuance, but I'm not a stickler for it. There we go. All right, so we've got some functions. Cool. So let's go ahead and set up a, a quick switch here, and let's switch on a few things because we're gonna. Uh, I'm not gonna make you go back and reference the the chart again because I remember we're running low on time. So let's just knock this out. Let's go and um, look at. So we need. So when focus is on a tab we need to respond to key down events uh, depending on which direction we're trying to navigate. Because what we're trying to wire up here is navigation. Because mm -hmm. uh, we can't tab to those inactive panels. We have to get to them by our other keyboard commands. So switch on event.key. And in response to this, we want to do some things. So go ahead and make a case for arrow down, a case for arrow up, or I'm sorry, not arrow down, uh, arrow left or arrow right, since these are horizontal tabs. Uh, um, uh, no, uh, capital A. Okay. Yeah. And then go ahead and set case for arrow right. Now, uh, there is an ARIA prop or attribute uh, called ARIA orientation that you could put on the tab list component. And if we had, uh, by default, it it assumes that we're rendering, uh, rendering horizontal tabs. But in the event that you want to do vertical tabs, you would use ARIA orientation on the tab list. Um, and then we would also change these to arrow up and arrow down to respond to that so that when a screen reader user hears that announcement, it tells them what the, the visual orientation of our tabs is so that they can adjust their keyboard expectations. Oh, so now the, now your keyboard behavior would always align to the visual representation and your screen reader users would, would know that, right? I, um, I always assumed it would be just more like a radio button implementation where radios you can use like left or up to go backwards or you could use down yep. or right to go forwards it's interesting yeah, you, that they give you that like layout option there the orientation i'm strictly following um wicag on this uh where they only tell you to mm -hmm. worry about left and right in the in the guidance and then they mm -hmm. tell you to swap um orientations if you have that prop but i don't necessarily think it would be terrible to just go ahead and add up and down if you wanted to but We'll just uh, we'll stick to the, the guidelines for now. Right. Also add a case for home and end because we want to be able to navigate quickly to the first or last panel as well. Ooh, okay. Also, and then go first ahead, letter go capitalized? Ahead. Yep. Cool. Looks good. And then go ahead and uh, for default, um, go ahead and just return. All right. Um, go back to our, let's go back to our table real quick. Just make sure I got all these. Yeah. I think it did. I think it's all we need for tabs. So that there, home down. Tab. Yeah, there's delete. Uh, tab's going to work no matter what, so we don't have to do deletes. We're not going to worry about because we don't have any editable tabs. Um, that's only if uh, tabs are editable and interesting. you can remove them. So we're not going to build that. So we're good for now. All right, so let's go back to our code. And what I want to do is on the case of arrow left, I want to set active value. Um, I don't know what I'm passing in yet, so just go ahead and uh, return after that. Uh, I'll return after. That. Yeah, just return. Don't pass anything yet. Return, and then copy that exact same thing down on each line, because under after each case, we are going to uh, set our active value and then return. But we need to figure out what to pass, so we need to get the index here. Uh, I'm not going to go into a long diatribe on finding indexes in child lists in React, because it uh, we'd be here all day. <laughs> but take a look at this. Um, I, I sent you a link to this documentation for one of our tools in Reach called the Descendants Book. Yeah. Um, if you go and take a look at that, um, and you can post a link for that uh, for users, it explains the problem in great detail. Um, basically, the problem is we need to figure out where our tab exists as in context of its parent component. And since we're enabling a lot of composition patterns with these compound components, 
we can't simply have an array of things. We don't know until render time what this item is and where it lives in a list, right? Mm -hmm. So we've got this this tool that we built in Reach to deal with this and, and handles lots and lots of messy edge cases. So I would take a link to this and, and share it for your users or the viewers here to read this in their own time. But um, for now, we have a, a pretty quick and dirty implementation that's going to skip a lot of the uh, the edge cases implemented right. down below. So um, at the top level in tabs, go ahead and pass another context provider. In tabs, okay, we're going to mm -hmm. have another context provider. Yep, um, go ahead and pass it. Um, pass it right after your tabs context provider. Doesn't really matter. All right. Cool. Um, and it's called descendant provider. We create it down below. Oh, okay, got it. Cool. Uh, no, no, just descendant provider. Descendant. Oh, yeah, okay. it's already. I've already created the uh, the provider as a separate component, I believe. I think I did. I hope I did. Let's find out. Yeah. Uh, is it defined? Yeah, it yeah, is. Yeah, looks Perfect. like it is. Cool. Yeah, I thought I did that for you. Um, so what this is going to do is it's going to start basically keeping count of all of our children, but we have to register our tabs as we create them. So now go down into your tab component, yes. and we are going to register this tab as a descendant, and we're that way we have some way to keep track of it. So um, go ahead and call um, use descendants. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you, you do want to get a value from this. Okay. So go ahead and uh, get a value, uh, and it'll be a destructured object. Is it descendants plural? Yep. Oops. I, I should have, uh, we, we always have issues spelling descendants internally because the uh, the actual English word descendants is spelled differently from the uh, the punk band descendants. <laughs> And I used to be a big fan of the Descendants of the Punk Band, and so I have never got the spelling right in the actual English word. So uh, what we're going to get here is we're going to, from this object, we're going to get a, uh, a method called get index. We're going to get another method called register and another method called keys. Oh, sorry, and then call uh, a method called deregister as well. All right, now go ahead and call use effect, another use effect. All right. And what we're going to do is on render, when we render this tab, we want to register it as a descendant. So we have uh, an index in our keys. And so uh, in the meth in the uh, effect, go ahead and call register. And then pass the value. And then return a cleanup function that is going to deregister. So if this thing leaves the, 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 uh, the tree for whatever reason, um, you need to pass an actual uh, a new a new method. So return a new oh, right. yes. function that calls deregister. There you go, perfect. Um, so on cleanup, when we unmount this component, we get rid of all that and go ahead and um, put the value as your dependency. Is is the value there? Yeah. Yeah, it's going to still complain at you, but just leave it for now. We don't need to worry about the others. The others should be stable anyway. But um, I think we I think I stabilized them, but just didn't want to go down a debugging. Sure. Uh, nightmare. All right, so uh, cool. So we've registered this as a as a thing. Uh, now we need to figure out our index. So um, we're going to do a little bit of math in our handle key down thing. Uh, so go into handle key down and go ahead and create a variable called index. No. I don't think I've ever like talked someone through coding quite this much. It's, it's <laughs> you're more doing challenging great. than you would think. You're, you're doing thanks. great. So the the goal right now is we have like these values that are just like the string. And we're trying to like map them back into their index so that we can decide basically go What's index next? minus one or index What's plus last? one. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So where are we now in the context of our list? If I navigate to the right, what's next? If I navigate to the left, what's last? Mm -hmm. That's all this song and dance is ultimately to get us to that end. So um, call get index and pass the value. So we're going to get our index from our descendants list here. Um, calculate the last index uh, with a new variable. And call okay. last index and go ahead and call uh, keys.length minus one, it's just the last index in that array. And then um, new variable called next index. And we're going to call this clamp function. Uh, that's just a mathematical thing that clamps between two values and go ahead and say index plus one. Our minimum value will be zero because that's the smallest index we can have, and our max value can be uh, last index. There you go. Perfect. And then do another for previous index. And then same thing, clamp, but we're going to just do index minus one. 
and zero plus index. Yep, yep. Okay. There you go. All right, so now we've got our indexes for each item in our array here. Let's go in and on the arrow left case, what we're going to do is a set the value uh, in call, uh, not previous index, but the value of our keys array. So we've got this keys thing oh. coming from our descendants context as well. So go ahead and say keys and get the previous index. There you go. Got it. And then for error left, next index. For home, just uh, zero. index zero. And then key, but last index. There you go. Cool. That's the money right there. So now, if all this works, which I not even sure if I got to test this at this point, so hopefully, fingers crossed. Oh, man. Drum roll. Uh, if all this works, when you land focus on your active tab and you arrow to the right or left, you should be able to navigate your tabs. Yes. Oh, my gosh. Money. I love Woo. it when it works in the first try. Oh, man. That feels good. Yeah. That feels so That's good. That's what I'm talking about. And I'm Look getting at that. right keyboard a whole bunch of time. Keyboard navigation. I love it. Amazing. Oh, that's so good. That's so good. I'm gonna uh, real quickly uh, turn on voiceover so we can get us a bit of screen reader experience with this too. Um, just because I think that would be a, a good thing to do before we before Absolutely. we work on spinning down. Um, can we get some like explosions in the chat or some like some sort of yeah. emojis that explain how good it feels when you save some code and it just works on that first sure. try because that is there's nothing better. Yep, emotes in the, the chat, chat. Yeah. yeah, I want the chat to go bonkers with that. Go haywire. For my own internal, uh, e for my own ego here. All right. <laughs> um, it never happens. I just, I, I'm always having problems, so. Yeah, uh, I'm, voiceover always seems to take, whenever I'm streaming, voiceover is like, I'm going to wait, like, a minute before yeah. starting up. Um, whereas we'll get there. every other time, it's, like, all too quick to pop up. Come on, voice. Oh. Ooh, froze. I Come froze. on, voiceover, do your thing. Nope. My whole machine has frozen. Uh, fantastic. Oh, no. Um, I don't know if you can even still see me moving, but you can still hear me. I can hear you. Yeah, I can hear you and see you. Amazing. Amazing. I'm not even yeah. going to be able to. Oh, there we go. We're all right. Voiceover off. Oh, voiceover off is now. You got it. Voiceover. All right. Uh, yeah, voiceover. Voiceover on system yes. preference. There we go. We're, we're live. I think uh, one thing we didn't do that you might want to do is pass an ARIA label to your actual tab list. Oh, um, okay. Because remember, we talked about labeling, so I, I can't remember if we did that, so it might affect your, your voiceover experience here. Yeah. Chrome, React app, Google Chrome, Semantics window, one, store dashboard, oh, fulfilled yeah, orders, go. selected tab, three of three, main, pending orders. Selected tab, two of three, all orders, so link, jokes, orders, list two items, right. Chrome has new window. You know that you're at the last tab, right? All yeah. orders, pending orders, fulfilled orders, fulfilled orders, and one more item, tab panel. You are currently nice. on a tab panel to interact with items. Nice. Oh, that's, that's such a good, good experience there, I think. Love it. So, yeah, we, I feel really good about our tabs here. Uh, this is... Uh, a, a, much simpler version of what we have in reach ui so if you're really interested in how we sort of handle like a more broad mm -hmm. uh set of use cases reach ui is a, is a code base you can look through and it's it's written very much like what we just wrote I mean, very similar in a lot of ways uh so there are some abstractions here and there but for the most part it's very similar uh so feel free to get that deep to get some of that nuance down and, and try and figure this stuff out and if you're interested in these general patterns this is what I'm building a workshop around in a few weeks. So uh, back to that workshop I mentioned earlier. If you really want to learn this stuff in depth, go deep on like the composition and all of the things that we've talked about at, at a much deeper level for a whole day. Uh, I'll be doing this for a whole day, and I would love for you to join me. I will absolutely I share the link, but first I have system to do... preferences, accessibility window, accessibility features. I I always feel like voiceover oh, selected. Voiceover off, please. There we go. Thank you. Voiceover is is the like the the worst the worst pair for a stream because uh, it's always like I want to like talk and then uh, I I don't want to turn off in a quiet way so I'm gonna have to interrupt someone um, but yes please please go sign up for Chance's uh, workshop here this is fantastic if if um, if you want to learn how to do composition like this um, Chance is your guy yeah. Um, so Chance, I'm gonna go ahead and and start wrapping up. But this has been fantastic. I I loved one comment from Michael in the the chat, which is 
um, can you guys cover every component in Reach UI now, a two-month series? And honestly, I wouldn't turn that down. Um, but chance I have a spin-off, uh, a spin-off stream called the Reach UI Breakdown. There we go. I I'd be so here for it. Uh, y'all go follow Chance um, on on Twitter. And uh, while you're at it, while while you're following people on Twitter, go follow me. Um, next week we have Lucia Surtree coming on. She's going to be showing us how to get started with. Ooh, we got some fun there here. Um, we're we're going to be showing how to get started with using automated accessibility testing using tools like Axe and Lighthouse and integrating those into your workflow. So it's going to be tons of fun. I'm super excited for that. Y'all, thank you for joining us uh, this stream, and I will see you next week. Bye. And thank you so much. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Chad. Bye.